Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why do you wanna use aggregations? Where do you create aggregations? And how do you create them? Stay tuned. Okay, so aggregations been out for a while. A lot of people are using them. A lot of people are not using them because they just don't quite understand when. When do I use aggregations? Where do I create them and how do I create them? So I decided to do some videos to kind of demystify this whole concept of aggregations, all right? And there's a lot of blog, blog posts out there. Shabnam Watson has written the blog post, Casper DeJong, Phil Seamark, there's tons of videos. I like, I mean, blog posts. Casper wrote a great one about why, right? You probably should start there, then move on to the other blog posts, all right? And so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start talking about why you should, create aggregations, right? Why you should use them. If you have large volumes of data, hundreds of millions, billions of rows, and I'm sure you've seen, some of you have seen Christian Wade's uh, demonstration, the clicky clicky, draggy droppy uh, demonstration that he does over so much data, right? If you have lots of data, it can help you unlock the insights, right? You can start doing analytics over these large uh, data sets. But what aggregations also do is they also help speed up your refreshes because instead of trying to refresh hundreds of millions or billions of rows, you refresh a smaller data set, all right? A smaller amount of data. And then they can also help reduce the size of your models, right? And so keep them small, keep those models at a smaller size, all right? So it's three clear reasons. And the last reason that a lot of people don't think about, and I was just talking to a friend, buddy of mine, Josh Kaplan, about this. And it's if you're working with a data set today, it may be 50 million rows, it may be 10 million rows, but that data set is gonna grow, right? It's gonna get larger and larger and larger. Your refreshes are gonna start slowing down. Maybe even your queries um, or your queries slow down a little bit and your model grows, right? And if you use aggregation, it's like a proactive step to help mitigate against potential performance problems with refreshes and just overall query problems, right? And a lot of people don't even think about that. All right, so that's why you should use them. Where do you create them? Well, before you think about creating them, you need to think about at what grain do you want this aggregation? And it's this is really critical because you need to know, make sure that the grain that you select is going to accommodate the queries that are generated by those, by those visuals. And we'll talk a lot more about that, you know, in some subsequent videos, all right? But today we're just talking about where do you create them? So the first thing you need to think about is at what grain, right? At what grain? Maybe you want to look, ensure that you're aggregating down to the product or to the territory or to the date. A date is a really common one. And that's the one I'm going to use in this video. That's the scenario I'm going to use in this video. So let's pretend, let's assume that the only aggregations we care about are at the date level, right? The grain is at the day level, but I have a date table that has, you know, month, year, and quarter. And so if I establish a relationship, wait, 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 wait. enough of all this talk and you guys know what I like to do, let's head over to my laptop. All right, so let's take a look at this. So I have a table here in my data warehouse that has 128 million rows, right, on my FACT online sales. It's using the Contoso DW database. I just kind of exploded it out, right? And I decided that I only want to create visuals that are associated, that go down, the, the lowest grain is at the date level, right? And so what you would do is to create your aggregation, so I'm gonna write a query that aggregates down to the date level. So I'm saying, give me the date key, and then the measures, right, that I'm gonna create are gonna be based on sales amount, quantity, and account of the number of rows in the table, right? So I'm gonna say, give me this, sum this, sum this. Um, I really don't need this. I was thinking about that, you know, just a little bit ago, because everything I need is contained in that one table and then grouped by the date. Right? So instead of having 128 million rows, when I run my refresh and I run this query against my, my Synapse server, not my data warehouse anymore, uh, query shouldn't take that long to run um, and then it shouldn't take that long to refresh. But what's gonna be great about this is, look how many rows, right? Only 4,582 rows. So I went from 128 million rows to around 4,000 4, rows, four or 5,000 rows. Are you kidding me? So instead of running the refresh to pull all that, I only have to pull 4,582 rows. So now I've identified my grain, now I need to decide how I'm gonna create these aggregations. The first way 
is you can persist the table to your database or data warehouse using some ETL process. Maybe you're using SSIS, maybe you're using Data Factory or some other ETL tool, right? And so you can use this in Synapse. You can do a create table as, and then just it'll persist all that data to a table for me. Um, and maybe I do a drop table before and then I run my create table as, right? You can persist it to your database, which is easy. Then I could just use import and import it. You can create a view, really simple. Right, write a query, create a view. These two are if you have access to the database, right? If you have access to the database or you know the database developer or the data DBA, you can say, hey, can you create an aggregation for me as part of the ETL process or add a view um, to the data warehouse that looks like this, all right? But what, Patrick? I don't have access to the database. Well, if you don't have access to the database, then guess what? You got two choices, you got two choices. What you can do, you can, write your query up the way you want it aggregated, go over to your database, go over to Power BI Desktop, sorry, connect to that database, and then use native query. Remember, if you use native query, no query folding is gonna happen. So make sure you do all your transformations in that native query. If you haven't watched the query folding video I did, go take a look, all right? Okay, you can use that, you can do a native query, or, you can use Power Query. And so what you would do is, the first thing you would do is only select the columns that you need to build that aggregation. So click Choose Columns, uncheck, all I need is the date key, the sales quantity, and the sales amount, and click OK, right? Those are the two columns I need. Let's check, let's see if query folding is taken in effect, right? So there you go, right? View native query, there's my query folding happening. And then what you'll do is, you use the group by function. So I'm gonna say group by this date key, Group by my date key, and then I'm gonna have fact online sales count, because that's the one I want, right? And then I'm gonna click advance, and I'm gonna say add an aggregation, and I'm gonna say sales amount sum, right? I'm gonna choose sum, and I'm gonna choose sales amount. Then I'm gonna add one more aggregation, because I need to work with both quantity and sales amount, and choose sum and then change this to quantity, right? So now I've aggregated this down to the grain of the date key, and if I click OK, right, it's gonna take a little bit for it to go out and run the query to pull my data back, but just be patient, just be patient. I'm gonna wait, bam, and just like that, there it is, right? It's aggregated down for each individual day and it's giving me the count and the sum for each one of those values. Is it folding back? Let's see. Right click here, view native query, and the query that it generate is not as clean as the one that I would have written in T-SQL myself, but it's essentially doing the exact same thing, all right? And now if we click close and apply, let's see how many rows is this gonna pull back, right? Let's just take a peek and do a refresh, and let's see how many rows this is gonna pull back. 4,582, if you paid attention fast enough, it was 4,582, which is equal the same number of rows that I ran when I ran that, with that were returned when I ran that query. What? This is bananas, right? So you can create it, you can persist it as part of your ETL, you can create a view, you can use a native query, or you can use Power Query, all right? This is just getting you started, priming you up with aggregations. In subsequent videos, I'm gonna show you how to configure them, and I'm gonna talk about different other options when you're using aggregations. All right, what do you guys think? Are you using aggregations today? You have any questions, comments? Let's continue the conversation. Where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button, and if you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.